Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Welcome to the podcast. Now I've got my uh, recording game on track. <laughs> I haven't screwed up this bad since I filmed Mom and Linda doing like an hour-long video on types right. of fabric. And with no audio. With no audio. It was wonderful. No microphone we were on. thrilled. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Mom, you really kept your composure there that Did day. I? It's a good thing Linda was around, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's better to ta- tell us some, those things there with there witnesses. There would have been some beeps and some beeps and some beeps. Okay. Yeah, anyway. Okay. Well, today we're going to talk anyway, about... Anyway, that's Mallory and I'm ZD. <laughs> yeah. Today we're going to talk about one of the most popular blog posts on our site. Which is news to me. I did not know this. Yeah, okay. and also, I, I this is something... I got to witness Mom's ingenuity firsthand. You know, a lot of times I'll ask Mom can we do this some weird thing and she's like sure if you want to screw it up no 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 no, no. <laughs> no i'll say i'll say can we make a such and such and you'll be like yes and then the heart music is like Gling! and you're like it happens like this but with with this project i felt like i got to see some of your problem solving process in firsthand right you know because it was one one of the first times you'd done it this way anyway so why we had to uh do this particular technique, which is sewing on beaded fabric, okay? How to sew on beaded fabric. We needed to do this because mom and I were into ballroom dancing, and I was going to be competing uh, in the standard uh, category. I needed a ballroom dress with floats on it, which are pieces right. of fabric that attach to your wrist. Is it, is it- Sort of a specific type of dress um, they require. Yeah, specific type of dress. It really need to be beautiful. And, you know, when we, I remember when we said that, you know, they're like, where are you getting your costume? I'm like, oh, my mom's making it. They're like, well, you know, it, it, it really needs to be professional. You yeah. know, I remember that. And remember of, when we really went and uh, saw them oh, and what yeah. they looked oh, like. Yeah. Well, right. that's, the, that's, right. the, that's right. the, the fun part of the end of the podcast. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, people were a little skeptical, but. Knew we needed this uh, beautiful, really decadent-looking dress with these floats connected to the wrists. And we were on vacation in Sarah, uh, South Carolina, and we went to a thrift store. Right. Consigning women. Consigning Char- Charleston, women. Charleston, South Carolina. That's right. Shout and out to them. Yes. Absolutely. They're amazing. And I was telling mom that I have met people in Columbia, Missouri, who, like, talk to me about consigning women <laughs> and have right. been there. So they're they're really wonderful. Um, so we bought this dress and it was a, a full length silk beaded dress. Right. All beaded with bugle beads, um, glass bugle beads. Right. Um, and the top had like this spider web. Right. That's what I would call it because it was open. It was like open work. It was almost like, cut like work. a Battenberg. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 It was like, it, except all of it was beaded. Yes. All beaded. And I, I remember saying, there's no way I can do this. And right. get this done in a, like, a fast manner. And I remember actually handing you the dress and saying, try this on, see if it fits. And then I said, oh, it doesn't matter if it, it doesn't fits. doesn't matter if it fits. We, we can make it fit. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and, yeah, so there was already a lot of, like, work. You know. But there Detail was, yeah, work. there was already a lot of a boom to the right. dress. You right. Know? It was silk. It yeah. was heavily beaded. And how much was it? Do you remember? Well, I think it was actually, like, almost $20 or something. But I didn't realize it was on sale. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it turned out to be $12. Oh, my God. And I actually cut more beads off, off of, of it, it that were worth $12 right. than – No, and it – well, it we have it today. It's yep. still hanging still, in the shop. We got it in the shop. It's gorgeous. Come to ZD Sewing and, Studio. And as far as making it fit you, I don't know if you remember, I had to take it up like – at the at the shoulders. Oh really? Yeah, like a quarter of an inch or I don't something. Remember it that. was like minimal. Oh really? Minimal. I, don't, I yeah. don't remember that part of it. Yeah. So it, it was kind of fun that it fit too. So except it, it was yeah, straight. Right, except it was straight. And you can't dance in a straight dress. No, not, not like you needed to not dance. Not like I needed to dance and I was, you know, doing the quick step and the the whatever else a waltz I was doing. or something, yeah, some right? Waltz, you know, so fox trot, I'll, whatever. No, not the fox trot. Oh, so is that, that the was wrong the, one? Yeah, that's the wrong one. See, I was right. doing the quick step, not the fox trot. Right, right, right. right. Anyway, um, I needed a dress that I could, you know, really kick out in. Right, and, right. And, and uh, spread dance. your legs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so 
we decided we would put gores right in, in that dress in that dress so we're like oh of course and so mom talk about how we well, talk about doing this. yeah well i mean what i did i don't know how many gores i put in the dress because i would have to look at it i assume at least six I, yeah that's maybe what i was eight. gonna say but um and i also put the gores in at varying heights i started like low on one side and then went high and on the other that is the hallmark of somebody with great taste is it's not just put, oh gonna cut some right. gores in here right you know the first one was kind of high on my thigh right and then they went down and it really made a big it was and then the impact. other thing is, is, of course, we couldn't match that silk perfectly. Right. Um, so what I did is I, bu- I bought three different, it was, it was brown silk, so I brought three different shades of brown silk mm-hmm. and layered them into these gores. Right. So that ver- basically, you know, you had an effect with lighting. You didn't really know what color they were. They changed yeah. colors. And we got right. to incorporate those fabrics into the floats too, and right. that's kind of nice when you're adding on to when you're adding on to something that's ready made or whatever. Right. And you can't get a perfect match. Incorporate it a couple places. Well, and my my rule as far as incorporation goes is generally you have to incorporate that new element or that new fabric, whatever it is, three times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not just two. Not just it, you know. Of course, the rules are made to be broken. Yep. But what I'm saying is to make it look like it came that way. So we cut uh, – what did you do first? Did you cut the – I think I cut the gore, the you, slits. You cut the slits I decided the where the slits would be, okay. you know, marked it off or whatever. And then I feel like I remember you testing sewing on this fabric, like with some of the things that you – had cut off. Really? I, I probably this, did. This be, is how, Because yes. my one rule is, uh-huh. right? Yeah. Right? You there, know. Are there are people who test and people who wish they had. That's right. Right. That's <laughs> my rule, especially when you're, you know, I mean, I had one shot with this dress, right. really. Right. Um, I, I, you know, the idea we had, we wanted to go with, you know, I probably had to cut some length off it, so that makes sense. Yeah. That had, I would have fabric to test yeah, with because had, you're short. Yeah, you had, you had this, you had this uh, scrap fabric, right? And I remember you trying to sew on it and being like, "You know, I'm gonna break needles." And so we were, you you had me cut away some of the beads, like uh-huh. cut some threads. We cut away beads, right. but we're like, "Oh." And that's the way. Then, okay, that's the way uh-huh. that generally you see beaded fabric worked with. There's two ways. Actually, there's two ways. You can cut the thread and unthread the beads, pull it back, and knot the beads so that more beads don't fall off. The other thing you can do is you can actually take like a pliers or a bead plier and crush the beads off of the fabric, or I'm sorry, off of the 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 fabric or off the thread that's on the fabric, right, that's holding it on Mm -hmm. the fabric. You actually just, you know, crush them and they fall off. So... It's, it's a real safe thing to do. You have all of this crushed <laughs> glass, glass all over the place. Right. No, you really do need to wear gloves and goggles when you do that. Yeah. Um, and I said, you know, I was trying to decide which way to do this and what would be the most efficient. And I, uh, because I don't know if you remember, you had a prom dress that was fully beaded, and those I just crushed off. That, I thought that was later. It was beaded. Was that before? Mm-hmm. No, it was, it was later. later. I thought it was later because oh, okay. then we were like, we know what to we do. We know what to do. Okay. <laughs> but but before this, I had crushed beads off. Uh-huh. Now the problem is, is after you crush the beads off, you really do need some extra beads because you know when you make your new seam, you may need to add beads sure. back because of sure. course you can't seam right up to a bead. So um, when you, when you're on wedding gowns, a lot of times you're taking the beads off meticulously, and um, you know backing up with 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 your up on that thread that's holding them on and saving the beads uh-huh. because you have to rebead you have to re- over that re- seam yeah. after you put it together, right? So well, I've done too much of that in my lifetime. Uh, uh, just thinking about that. So we so, had a we had, a, but we knew where right, our seam lines right. were going to be exactly. Right, and they boards. were new seam lines. Mm-hmm. I was cutting them. They were new. You know, I was cutting slits in this fabric, spreading it, and adding a gore. Okay, and then maybe I'm just remembering <gasps> this because I idealize you. Yes. But I seem to remember you being like, I got it. You you know, Eureka. An and epiphany then, of and, mine. Yes, an yes. epiphany. And then what, you. Was it like while we were working or did I have it at night when I was sleeping? Cause no, that I think I was around. Sometimes or, I have it when I'm driving that's too. That's how it is now, yeah. in the, now that I'm telling it on the podcast. <laughs> and you got out a hammer. Right. Yeah. And, and painter's tape, painter's low-tech tape. tape. So tell us how we did it. So where we wanted to sew 
where we needed to sew, we put down the painter's tape. Mm -hmm. And we went back with the hammer and we hit it. And we crunched the uh, beads. Yep. Again, breaking beads. Yep. The thing was, is then when we pull back the low-tech tape, it took the broken beads away. Yep. And left us with a nice, clean piece of fabric and not the mess and, and everything else and not the flying glass. It really did work out. It takes very little you know, force, force sure. to do this, really. Sure. In fact, the hammer seemed like it took less force than doing it with the pliers. The pliers. The, pliers, the problem with the pliers is, you know, the beads around and they might, you know, mm -hmm. they want to like, you know, squish out, sort of shoot out of there or whatever. You're not on there real good. But it was an excellent idea that I had. And did you put you? So we've got the silk on the table, right? Painters tape. I had and I had tissue paper and under some, it. Okay, I had tissue paper under, under the, the dress, silk? basically, right? And then did you also did you put like a piece of muslin over it or anything? Uh, or did you just go right onto that painter's no, tape? No, I went right on the painter's tape. And I remember being concerned, mm -hmm. are we going to, you know, tear or pierce or... The silk. Some, right. Somehow, yeah. right, blemish the silk by doing this. But it take, it took such a slight tap. Well, yeah, and you, just yeah. Don't, you don't just go crazy. You go on the painter's tape. Right, like, you go you know? on the painter's <laughs> tape. You do it lightly. I used a very small hammer. Mm -hmm. It was not a big hammer. It was a small little, like, tack hammer. And... We also, like, what painter's tape, how wide was it? An inch, three quarters of an inch? It was yeah. plenty wide. It was plenty wide. For the seam allowance. Right, you know? right, right. And then it was very easy. I mean, then you're just sewing with fabric. Right. Your, your bead threads shouldn't. Are still there. Yeah, they shouldn't right. be hurt. They shouldn't right. be the harmed. Bead, the thread that's on the bead is in, yeah. that's holding the bead on is basically stayed intact. Right. Mm -hmm. And then with that dress, you then added those gores in. Right. And... We added more beads to the dress. Actually, you added some big honkin swarovski I had, crystals. Yeah, I added crystals. Just, just that was for light, the light to catch differently on the dress. I think there's also small, tiny teardrop beads at the top of every gore. I, they're, oh, are they're, there? Yes, okay. they're almost like a because there were teardrops. I think on your yeah, floaters you put, too. You put a, yeah, you put the teardrop beads somewhere else too, but they're on right. the top of those. And then all around the hem after the gores are in it's a fishing line yeah the fishing line hem on the um, serger mm -hmm. that's the big rippled hem yes and so i and looked... if anybody got married in the 80s yes you know what we're talking <laughs> about <laughs> they had they had probably had that like i mean like got married and had a wedding yeah um you probably had that maybe on your veil or your dress or whatever the big like that it yeah. makes the hem really scallopy looking fluttery, fluttery scallopy. looking yes yeah. yes yes very you know and, right. And I want to make up a word. And what, <laughs> well, what you have to know about that, too, is the gores have, were cut on the bias. They uh -huh. needed to be cut on the bias. And that hem only works on stretch or bias. Right. So that's one reason it does work really good, like, on veiling fabric. Right. Like, tulle is because you, you sort of have to stretch that to give yes. that look. Yes. Yeah. And uh, with, the, with the beaded fabric, was there any other... Anything else in, to take into consideration? Like, did you finish the fabric before you did you did you serge the edge or, or finish I, I off the edge? I did serge the edge before first. Before yes, I you did. You put the before gores I, in. Okay. Yeah, I, everything was surged before it went in. I'm pretty sure. I was just thinking. I don't know. I'd have to look at it. I might have done it the other way. Now that I, you know, you want to keep anchoring those. I may, you know, Those I could have threads. possibly even basted, you uh -huh. know, along the side like of stay that. stitched or right, basted, right. yeah. Stay stitched along the side of those. Um, I, you know, uh, uh, again, a lot of times what happens is everything I do can be an experiment for the first time. <laughs> so I'm sure I tested to see if I needed to. Right, That was right. a pretty tight woven... Um, silk. Silk. Yes. So I... You know, it was easy to work with. Well, and then, okay, so this ties into mom used to manage a fabric store, mm -hmm. and uh, it was called Anatole's, and they still have a store in St. Louis, Missouri, and they they had all these beautiful garment fabrics, home deck fabrics, you know, these silks, and just right. every, so beautiful, and then, but some of the fabrics didn't come on bolts. <laughs> there were just little swatches there. <laughs> Like the really expensive fabrics. Like the 99 Anything that was over like $100 right. or more per yard. Yeah, like the $99. Well, or some of them were know. special order fabrics, right? Right, right. The, the $99, you know, beaded silk. Like, they're, this fabric that we ended up buying from this 
thrifted dress, you know, it reminded me of that, fabric. Of, of that fabric that I could see in the fabric store. And ever since I was a little girl, like 12 or 13, like, oh, I want a dress made out of this. I want a dress made out of this. So I finally got the chance senior year of high school to um, have a prom dress made out of this. And well, got the chance <laughs> like she demanded. <laughs> Mallory would come in with these like pictures. Actually, picture, it was inspired. She by, would come yeah. in with drawings when she was maybe eight, like out of crayon and go make me this dress. That's so right. this is nothing new. That's right. So she came in and said, you know, I know the dress I want, blah, blah, blah. I said, can't we go buy it? I said, can't we go buy it someplace? You know what? We could and, have. And we did. We yep. went and found one very similar to no, it. it was the same dress. Was it was, it? Okay, Sandra Bullock wore this BCBG dress to some... But wasn't it like $800 or something? Yep. Yes. Yep. She and did. Yet she wore it to some oh. award show. Okay. I didn't know it was Sandra Bullock's Yeah, dress. it was Sandra Bullock, and it was BCBG. And then there was a boutique in town. That had that, that dress. Had the dress, and okay. we went there. And I think it maybe was only six hundred. Oh, okay. Well, and you know, I, <laughs> I think that maybe I only had one kid in college then, mm-hmm. but um, we're, we 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 weren't six hundred dollar dress people then, especially That's if right. we maybe it was only going to be for one night. That's right. And also, it was a very brief dress. Right. So this was a short dress. So even yeah. with the fabric mm-hmm. is a hundred dollars a yard. Right. We only, I think we only used we only, two yards. No, no, I think we only bought one, one yard because it was 60 inches wide. Yeah. And then I did buy some, I don't know if I bought some silk chiffon or had some silk chiffon that uh, we made a belt, a sash. Yeah, there was a silk sash. chiffon. And actually, my fabric is probably nicer right. than the BCBG dress because. Oh, no, it was. Yeah, it was the, not silk. The BCBG dress wasn't silk and also right. it had just like plastic sequins on That's it. That's right. It was sequined. This and was beaded. Mine were glass. Bugle beads. And um, I and believe I, I had silk <laughs> left over from your sister's wedding dress that oh, okay. we lined it with. Lined it with. Right. Mm-hmm. So I still have that dress. So it was only a $100 dress. <laughs> right. But I did like $4,000 worth of labor yes, on it. Yes, exactly. Actually, <laughs> you want to tell them what happened at like 3 o'clock in the morning? Well, that's when you started making the dress. No, no, no. <laughs> I had already made it. And I didn't like the way the top. I don't know if you remember. No, this. yeah, I do remember that. She's draping this top. Like I come up there and I can't like really like wear a bra with this dress because it's strapless bra on or something. And she's like, she's like manhandling. It's a deep me. V, she, like between oh, the breasts. Totally. To, it's like yeah, V below. Right. It's you to know, the navel the, almost. To the, to the underbust, right. you know, total V there. And the back and, is the same way. And I had another dress like this, and we thought we could like copy it, but it wasn't working right. And you didn't like the way it was draping. And she takes the top of the dress. <laughs> This hundred dollar a yard silk, glass beaded fabric, and just throws it in the trash. Like I just, just said, this is not going to work. I have to start over. And she's like, no. And I said, it'll work. It'll work. Don't worry. I now I, I've made all the mistakes, and I know. And it it did come out perfect. Yeah, and then she and then she whipped it up, and it was good. It was and actually, amazing. Prom is so dumb. <laughs> prom, is, prom is all about the dress. That's what it was for and me. One, it is for everybody. And once you get the dress, well, maybe not for all the guys, but. Uh, right. Or, oh, whoever, or whoever's not wearing a dress. But all the people that wear a dress to prom, it's all about the dress. It's all it's about. And my poor guy, I didn't really even like him very much. And <laughs> I'd like think I'd, I was the senior. Well, I brought a younger right. man to prom and I, I just like well, didn't go out with him ever. I was like, s- I'm tired because <laughs> my mom had me up at four in the morning making my prom dress. Well, when. Li- when Lindsay went to the prom and I made her dress, she said all night, everyone just kept stopping her and saying, oh, my gosh, did your mother make that dress? Yeah. And I actually had covered Lindsay's shoes, partially covered her shoes with the her, her dress. Everybody's, everybody's prom dress was silk. Um, everybody's wedding dress, I guess, was silk, too. But uh, I had covered her shoes with some of the silk that I made her dress out of. Yeah. And everybody's the boy was, like, going nuts over no. the shoes. But... Um, <laughs> No, that Lindsay's dress. We should put that. We should yeah. photograph that too. That's one of my favorite. It is one of my favorite, and it's funny because Lindsay said, "When you let mom do what mom wants to do, you're never yeah, disappointed." You're never disappointed. No, and she I'm... actually did that. She said, "Whatever you want," and I just showed her the pieces of fabric and said, "It's going to be made out of this." The one thing Lindsay said, "This is really funny," is she says. My dress smells funny. Yep. And I said. It still smells funny. Your dress is made out of silk. 
and she goes made out of worm butt. So, that's right. She goes, so why does it smell funny? I said, it's because silk comes out of a worm's butt. Yep, I don't know. That's right. that's but right. silk sometimes has a weird, you know, smell to it. It smells sweet yet a, the, a little a acrid musky, or something. Musky yes, and musk musky is the yeah, word. Yeah, it's musky. Sweet. I would I would say almost acrid. Yeah. sometimes or something. But and that you know that that. It's not an odor that goes away. No, and you know what? You know where that musk smell comes from is from the whale throw up, the verdigris stuff. That's where those perfume companies get it. So yeah, we just like to rub <laughs> animal detritus all over ours. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> well, you know, every time I see like on Pinterest yeah. or or the and they take an avocado and make a facial out of it. I get so upset that I can't eat the avocado. You probably can after you put it on your face. I, I guess, <laughs> but like I cannot do an avocado facial because I have to you eat just the avocado. Eat it. Yeah. All right. Oh, and I just want to say with the, you know, let mom do what she wants. You know, some people are like, oh, I never go shopping with my mom, or I would never, you know, do this or that, or my mom doesn't have good taste. I, all my life, go shopping with my mom. And she'd be like, try this on. And even if I was like, I don't know about that, I would try it on. Because it was, most of the time, pretty freaking awesome. And everything, yeah, everything mom made me, if I would draw it, she'd make it work. While I was pregnant, she was my personal stylist. (laughs) It's the burden of having impeccable taste. (laughs) That's right. What can I say? (laughs) Well, if you have a, a question about how to sew on some weirdo expensive fabric, you can ask us. Um, You can ask us through email on the contact us link at sewhere.com. And you can follow us on Instagram. We are ZD's Sewing Studio. Thank you for listening. So long and happy sewing. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit sewhere.com. 